God bless you as you tune in. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Trevor Gaga. I preach the gospel, the gospel of the Lord Jesus. According to the revelation that the Lord has imparted in my heart over the years. So that all brethren, brethren who come in contact with our ministry, may be able to see what is the mystery of the union that we have with the Father right from the beginning. God is in a process of restoring that which the robber has snatched away from his sons. He's in the process of repairing everything that was lost destroyed God is bringing everything back the way it was in the beginning praise God so that the end will be exactly the way it was in the beginning of course we know that that which God does is not flawed that which God does is perfect see but our ways as men tends to hide the reality of the beauty of the work of God from our sight but thank God because Jesus Christ says I have come praise God I have come that we may you may have life and life abundantly life is enjoyment it's pleasure so when last did you enjoy life when last did you laugh when last did you truly feel the joy of the Lord in your heart. Praise God, we are born to praise God. We are born to be a reflection of His glory. See, God did not generate man to suffer. Never, never, never did God do that. Praise God. So right now, the revelation of Christ has come that we may have life and life abundantly. Praise God, life in its fullness, that life that overflows, that life of paradise, that life of Eden. Praise God, a life where there is no pain, no sorrow, no death. Praise God, God is restoring the beauty of that life today. So he's educating us today on the mystery of Christ. In this message, we want to look at the resurrection body, the spiritual body. You can also call it the angelic body. The angelic body within you. Praise God. You see, we discover that when God does a work, God does not start to do something afresh. Does, God does not do any new thing. He simply brings out the truth that is already embedded within man. Praise God. Jesus Christ says, I've come to bear witness of the truth. And the truth is that which has been from the beginning. Truth is originality. And that is what God, Jesus Christ, simply came to testify about. Now, we suffer many things. We suffer as men because we walk ignorant of our true nature. We walk ignorant of our true bodies. We walk ignorant of our true names, our true identities. That's why we suffer many things. See, as the, it's written in the book of Proverbs, I think, it says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. See, what you think of yourself goes a long way in affecting your life upon the earth. See, if you look at yourself as a mere human being, see, whose origin is of the earth, who is married to this world so shall it be for you and of course in that kind of sense or that kind of conviction you suffer many things you suffer limitations you suffer irritation you suffer bitterness you see you suffer the many many emotional pains that men go through simply because of what you think you are 
or what you perceive yourself to be. Praise God. Hallelujah. So when we operate with the spirit of man, incidentally the Bible says cease from man. Cease from man means cease from the wisdom of man. Cease from the understanding of man. The wisdom of man will only conform you to the terrestrial. It will only conform you to this material world. It will only conform you to that which is in time and in space. When you operate with the spirit of man, so it says, cease from man. Cease from man, since whose life or whose breath is in his nostrils. Cease from that man. Reality, a man at his best is like a beast that perishes. Praise God. A beast that continues to go down the pit and he perishes. See, when you say perishing, it's a continuous state of endless destruction. A continuous sinking into, into the abyss. Marie Clay. A bottomless pit, so, so to say. It's continuous. Death is a continuous process for the man that walks in ignorance. So even when you, you leave the flesh body, you continue to die until you accept the truth, until you are waking to the reality of what the Lord is revealing to us today. So as a man thinks in his heart so easy, Jesus Christ has come, he has given us the spirit, Cease from man means cease from the spirit of man, cease from the understanding of man, which is all carnality, materialism. Cease from that and begin to receive of the spirit of God. When you, you receive from the spirit of God, you begin to think like God. See, there's an awakening in the faculties and we now become aware of our true identities our true name our true bodies our true nature and in so doing we are set free see the psalmist says my soul has escaped from the you know the snare of the fowler see my soul has escaped from the snare of the fowler see the snare is broken and we have escaped See, that soul is the little bird. That bird is the little soul that has been entrapped in a terrestrial sense of life. Trapped in time and in space, in limitedness. See, it became a slave to corruption, to the loss of this age. See, but praise God because our salvation is in the name of the Lord who has commanded light to shine in the darkness. And when the light comes, what the light does is to liberate us so that we can soar once more into the infinite dimensions of God, the boundless dimensions of God. Just look at the bed fly. Fly. A bed does not need you know, an air ticket to fly in the heavens. It's free. Yeah, you, know, you know all our labor and all our struggling is for these birds, for these animals who receive freely. How much more precious are we, sons of God, sons of the Most High God? Praise God. So when we cease from the spirit of man, from the wisdom of man, there is an increase in the seek in Christ. You know, now Christ in us is simply. The spiritual being that is in us. Paul often spoke about the inner man. That we may be strengthened in the inner man. Prince Paul also spoke about a temple not made with hands. He spoke about the dissolving of this outer tabernacle. Praise God. Now the dissolving of the outer tabernacle is not necessarily just the body. But also all... The sensation, all the impression, all the beliefs that we have concerning who we are in relation to this world. We mistakenly, we, we get it wrong where we do not realize that in reality 
our true nature, our true name, our true body is that of the Lord. Praise God. This is the greatest secret of all ages. Praise God. Now when we walk in relation to anything apart from the eternal name of the Lord, we walk in relation to idols. Oh, hallelujah. Now the revelation light comes and it, as we hear this word, the outer body, which is the, what we call the body of sin, the outer tabernacle, that which is, has its attachments to this world, is dissolved. Praise God, so that we can realize the richness of life through the inner man or the, that temple that is not made with hands. It's a wonderful thing. So the Spirit of God is reminding us of our boundless selves, our boundless natures, the pure spiritual beings that we are. See, we are not bound to the elements of this world. Praise God, we are not from beneath, but well, rather we are from above. These are things that we forgot in our descent into this world. And we've suffered dearly for it. Praise God. There's an awakening now. Jesus Christ spoke about the sons of the resurrection. The sons of the resurrection. He spoke about those who are worthy to attain to the new age that is in Christ. The new age or the new worlds, the worlds to come in God. Praise God. Praise God. Many of us know that we are being ushered into a new world. Hallelujah. When we enter back into the fellowship with the myriads of saints that make the body of the Lord. Praise God. We are being awakened back into that fellowship that we fell out of in Adam. In Adam we slept. And you see, when you sleep, you lose awareness of all reality. So now it says, awake. Awake. When you are awake, you resurrect. The Resurrection from the bed is, is the resurrection is your awakening from the life from the from your deep state of sleep. We all slept in Adam. Praise God. When you are asleep, many many things go wrong in your life. You suffer many things. You live in relation to idols. Even your formation yourself, your your human identity is an idol because it does not have an eternal substance to it. Many, many things we suffer, the bitterness, the pain, the sense of poverty, sense of abandonment. Insats, you know, some of us can never be satisfied. Lusts, unbraided lust, all these things come out of a mistaken identity because we don't know what our true nature is all about. Praise God, hence the need to grow in the knowledge of Christ. See, Jesus Christ spoke about the sons of the resurrection who are worthy to attain to the ages to come, to the worlds to come. Now, this is the new heavens and the new earth where there's no more pain, no more sorrow. Where the Lord says, You shall be a son unto me, and I a father unto you. It's where he says that I shall give you the morning star. Praise God, where he says that you shall, you know, you enter into a place where there is no more cause. No more sorrow, no more pain, no more death. A realm where nothing that defies or makes a lie can enter into. Now what is that thing that lies, that defies and makes a lie? See, it's the wisdom through the carnal mind that deceives you into thinking that you are terrestrial. That deceives you into thinking that your origins of the earth that deceives you into thinking that you have an identity apart from the eternal identity of the Lord. Oh, praise God. That is the serpent mind. And the serpent mind cannot find itself in the midst of the New Jerusalem where you have the Garden of Eden. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Now, the Bible speaks clearly of two types of trees that were in the Garden of Eden. Or rather, two types of trees. One was in the midst of the garden. That was the tree of life. 
and another tree the bible never mentioned that the other tree was in the center in the midst of the garden praise god he only said there were two trees but there was one in the midst of the garden called the tree of life praise god so who knows where adam fetched the other the tree the, the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil from because there's no way the serpent mind or the serpent can find itself within the paradise of God. It's impossible. Hallelujah. Praise God that, that we leave that for another day. So somewhere along the line, man defiled himself with the lie and started to live after the flesh. So living after the flesh has caused too much pain and havoc and all the confusion and all the pain, the sorrow, poverty in the midst of you know, plenty, all the hatings and murders and the confusion we see in this world is a result of the lie that men have been fed with. So we have the sons of the resurrection who rediscover themselves back in the ages to come, in the worlds to come, which is actually the original world, God's kingdom. God's kingdom is ever present. It never, never left anywhere. It was man that left God's kingdom. So now he says that the sons of the resurrection, those who are worthy to partake of the ages to come, they, they don't marry, neither are they given into marriage. Now what is he talking about marriage here? He's talking about these ones don't marry, they have no bond, you know, no union with anything apart from that union that they have with the Lord. Praise God. All our concepts of what of, of what marriage is, of what family is, of what you know society is, of what church is, of what religion is, every single thing that we have in this age are all lies. They have no eternal value. See, those who have who enter into that age don't marry neither are they given to marriage see they are like angels that never die they live on from age to age these are the sons of the resurrection now it's not something talking of something for tomorrow but something for the now it's talking about those who have discovered the mystery of i the christ because i am the resurrection and i am the life I am the resurrection and I am the life. Those are those who have rediscovered the secret of themselves, of their true bodies. And I tell you, their body is not natural. Their body is spiritual. Hallelujah. Their body is pure light. Now when we say light, it's talking of spiritual light. It's not some kind of physical light. Even the transfigured Jesus, you know the Bible speaks about Jesus, how he transfigured, how his body glowed upon the mountain of transfiguration. There is no such thing, that all that was just an allegorical view of the invisible body of Christ. Praise God. Every man has to take that journey up into the spirit. Every man has to allow the the revelation of Christ, the guidance of the Spirit to lead him back to that high mountain where he can see and experience his true self, the true spiritual body. Praise God that Jesus Christ did not do that just to show off. He's doing that to educate us of the secret of the Christ in you, of the angel in you, the angelic body in you, the Christ in you. Praise God. You know when Jesus Christ transfigured, you were there in that transfiguration? Praise God. The Bible says that there was a cloud that hovered over Jesus. It's a cloud of witnesses. It's an innumerable company of myriads of angels, spirits, sons of the resurrection. Praise God. And they're always interwoven in one. Praise God, wherever the other brother is in the resurrection, 
I am there. Whatever that one is, I am there. We are always one in that cloud, in that union, indivisible throughout all eternity. Praise God. Now, when a man loses track of his true nature, now you begin to suffer many things. You suffer the bondages, the hurts, and the pains, and the sorrows. This world is emotional pains. You, you see, your, your children hurt you. Your family members hurt you. Your colleagues in the workplace hurt you. Your friends hurt you. See, your, your, your pocket hurts you. Everything around, there's just pain and fatigue and sorrow and you know it never seems to end in this world and it can never end it can't end see Jesus Christ just all he did was just say brethren let us go up and I will show you a new and living way back into life all you need for your happiness your sustenance and everything is to know the Christ in you to realize the angel in you, the spiritual body in you. This is the work of God. This is the work of the ministry of reconciliation which Christ or God is working in our lives today. He wants every child to awaken to the reality of his true nature. Because when you know your true spiritual body, then we can walk on the waters. Praise God. And then we can walk on the waters. Like Jesus Christ walked on the waters. It means that we are not subject to, you know, the laws of gravity. We are not subject to the laws that govern men. We are not of this world. Praise God. The hurts and the pains of this world can drown us. This fear, the despair desperation and all those things that men suffer cannot be our portion when we know the secret of the Christ in us incidentally Jesus Christ while he walked upon the sea he said he told his disciples who were scared stiff when they saw him he told them it is I fear not it is what it is I we must rediscover the I that is in us we must rediscover the spiritual body in us. We must discover the eternal personality that we have in us. We must discover the Christ in us. Only as we know the I that is in us that we can discover true life. Amen. Jesus was simply demonstrating the resurrection body to the disciples as he walked upon the seas. He was displaying the angelic personality that was within himself as he walked upon the sea and that angelic personality is within every man praise god this is our great gift this is the gift of love this is the gift of god to hum humanity hallelujah that's why we are admonished to hear the voice of the spirit hallelujah jesus christ while he transfigured there was a voice that said this is my son in whom i well pleased hear him hear him mind how you hear what the spirit says to the church because as you are listening to the counsel of the spirit as you enter into communion with the lord what the lord simply does is to reveal the lord's body to you he reveals the incorruptible body of the eye that is nested within you this is the salvation of god to mankind there's nothing else that you ever need than to know your true spiritual boundless body. Hallelujah. Then you are free from the elements of this world. Jesus Christ says, where I am is where my servants will be. Praise God. And he says that in that day, no man, nothing can touch you. No man can touch you. It's all the infliction of pain, sorrow, bitterness, and the things that men fling at each other can get to you when you discover your true spiritual nature. No one can make you inferior. No man can despise you because you know yourself the way you are known of God. And you experience your true nature once more. 
Hallelujah. Angels, sons of God, sons of the resurrection, walking in a new age, in a new dimension, in a new world. Praise God. The book of Revelation chapter 22 speaks about a new heavens and a new earth where there is no more sea. The sea is no more. Oh, hallelujah. You know, has it occurred to you that while Jesus Christ walked upon the seas, that in reality there was no sea there? Because Jesus Christ represents the angelic body that walks in the new heavens and in the new earth, in God's kingdom, in God's realm. No more sea. Praise God. The sea is simply a formulation of the ignorance Hallelujah, embedded in the carnal mind. See, men plunge into a sea of destruction when they put on the carnal mind. So when you put on the carnal mind, what you simply do is to formulate idols. Idols. See, and when you follow after these idols, things that are not God, they become God in your life. Things that are not Things that look as though they are, but they are not. They just, they appear, they seem to be, but they are not. And you become, you, you, you are tossed to and fro by these things. Praise God. But God is showing us today a way out of this thing, and this is by experiencing life in the Spirit. First of all, by recognizing it, fellowshipping. Jesus Christ gave the cup of the communion, and he broke the bread with his disciples and said, Do this in remembrance of me. Oh, hallelujah. Now it's, it's communion with the body of Christ. Remembrance of the body of Christ. Remembrance of the Lord, which is your life. Praise God. Now when we forget these things, then all kind of things begin to go wrong for you. Praise God. And we are filled with fear day and night. Fear of death. Fear of sickness. Fear of what happens to my loved ones. Fear of what happened to my husband, what happened to my dad, what happened to my mom, what happened to my brothers, my sisters. Why? Because you are ignorant of the secret of the Lord's body. Nobody can ever die. Praise God. You can only believe in death while you are asleep. It is the dead that die. Jesus Christ said, let the dead bury the dead. But you that are living, move on into higher things. Move on and glorify the name of your Lord. Praise God. So you see, in the Bible, there are many, many instances where the Bible speaks about the resurrection body or the angelic body. Many, many signs, different ways. You know, the Bible is a very, very interesting book. Even in nature, nature teaches us about the resurrection body. Have you looked at the, the metamorphosis of the butterfly? Analyze it properly and you will get the message of the spirit. See it in that, mess, in, that in, in, in the metamorphosis process. Because God is already teaching us something there. But how can you know this if you don't have spiritual ears to hear? You see, the, the word of God goes beyond the written letters in the Bible. Of course, the written letters in the Bible is all part of it and it's interesting. But I can assure you that to, to attain to the fullness of Christ or to attain to that place that God has called us to, it's not just by reading the letters of the Bible. It is what the Spirit of God imparts in you. Now, if the Spirit of the Lord chooses to give you a revelation on your resurrection body. If the Spirit of the Lord chooses you to educate you through just the metamorphosis of the butterfly, that is enough. Because in the metamorphosis of the butterfly, God demonstrates how the resurrected body is already embedded within you. The angelic body, the spiritual body is already in you. The thing that you are looking for, the glory and the beauty and the liberty you are looking for is already in you. 
the butterfly does not go out to do shopping to shop for a body for for wings it doesn't go out to shop for wings it doesn't go out to get anything for without everything that it requires to enter into a phase a glorious phase is already within itself all the butterfly has to do is to get still for a moment which is symbolic of meditation and prayers and in due season there's a, a renewing a change within a miraculous change and a new creature breaks for that of a cocoon no more the terrestrial creature ugly creature limited creature weak creature despised creature but now a beautiful creature free flying freely in the sky Fra flying freely in the heavenlies praise god is a wonderful thing this is what we call the resurrected body the spiritual body so god uses the that, that story already to teach us great things concerning the life your true life that is within you see as long as we deceive ourselves thinking that we are terrestrial thinking that we are black or white thinking that we are this we are that thinking that we have some kind of sense of belonging to this world we we'll just suffer many things and we are miserable praise God but like the psalmist says, I shall be satisfied when I awake in your likeness. Praise God. A new glorious creature who is the Lord from heaven emerges. When man begins to hear truth, perceive the voice of the spirit, is elevated from the illusion of being terrestrial. And begins to sour feel in the heavens, not being influenced or affected anymore by the things of this age. Praise God, we can be free. He has come to set his captives free. See, the whole earth, the whole world today is in travail unto now, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. See, waiting for the sons of God to rediscover their spiritual bodies, the angel in them. Praise God, that is the travail See, that is the entrance, that is the passageway to the glorious liberty of the sons of God. To know our spiritual selves. To be free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is the what will make us free from the lusts and the sins and the pains and the murderous tendencies and the hurts and many things that we have suffered as men. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Then you can truly love and rest and enjoy God's creation for free you don't have to pay a dime to enjoy the creation because the creation is yours the butterfly does not have to pay a dime to sour freely in the heavens it doesn't have to pay a dime to suck you know you know the juice or nectar from the from the flowers it flies liberty freely in liberty and enjoys the works of God. And that is what we are born to do. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm going to round up with a vision of Daniel. Praise God. Because God is educating us today about the resurrection body, the angelic body, the body of light, which we lost see, due to the mental degradation of man we were degraded mentally in our thought faculties in our minds and the word has come now reminding us of the mind of christ it says let that mind be in you that was in christ jesus who taught it not a robbery to be equal with god now this is the kind of thought that would have sounded blasphemous in the in the past like blasphemy it's like blasphemy to the religious mind but let that mind be restored back to you. So that is the sound mind that is in Christ Jesus. Let it be restored back to you. 
See, and as you are restored, you begin to be lifted up once more from the Mary clay. Praise God. Jesus, um, Daniel, in one of his many visions, saw the visions of the ages to come. Visions of the resurrection. Visions of Christ. Great, great visions. See, as the Lord wills, I might just do a compilation of, you know, some of the books of Daniel in the future. In a book. See, all these things are just there to educate us individually. To teach us about the beauty of the Lord that we are. Praise God. Daniel, in one of his visions, saw four beasts, you know. One looking like a bear, one like a leopard. Hallelujah. Wide looking beasts. And a lion, wide looking beast. And a third one like a monster. Wide looking beast coming out of a sea. There was a, a wind that was tearing up the sea. In reality, that is the whirlwind. Staring up the sea. The Holy Ghost. This is the wind of the Holy Ghost that God has sent to the world to fetch the sons and daughters of God out of the realm of darkness. Because God is here to fetch his sons from the uttermost parts of the earth. To take them back to the uttermost parts of the heavens. Where they can once more realize their glorious selves. Hallelujah. In staring up the sea, Daniel saw four beasts. That rose out of the beast of the sea. Oh, praise God. This represents man in his degraded state. Man that has been reduced to become a beast. Praise God. It represents the dead in state of man. When man becomes a terrestrial creature, a creature of lust. It, a, a, a murderous creature of pride, blasphemies. Daniel saw that one of the beasts, the beast, the, 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 the creature, the strange fourth creature, was speaking blasphemous words against God. Speaking high words, boasting. This is the nature of man, of the man of the flesh. Jesus Christ summarized it. He said, out of the heart of man flows envies, lusts, blasphemies. Name it. He talks of the deadness, you know, the general state of man in the sin. In the abyss of nothingness. In the deep where there is no knowledge of God. See, but wherever any man finds himself the Father is coming to get you out of that. Hallelujah. And he's doing this today by educating us. Staring up the sea and there's a resurrection. Those who are dead in the sea, the dead in the sea, are being raised up. Praise God. And every man is being presented before the Lord. Before the, the judgment seat of Christ. And what the judgment seat of Christ does as we appear before the judgment seat of Christ, is that the nature of sin is destroyed in us. That is why those beasts, those wild looking beasts were subdued. And the fourth boastful creature, which represents the flesh, was destroyed, was killed, you know, and destroyed by fire, burnt with fire. And I tell you, fire will only destroy that which is consumable. Oh, hallelujah. And all this were before the throne of God. There's something interesting I just want us to, to realize. That Daniel saw angels that were around the Ancient of Days. The Ancient of Days actually is the eternal spirit of God. With the spirit of Christ, the, and there were angels around the ancient of days that were serving him. Oh, hallelujah! My rights, innumerable company of angels serving the Lord. Who are these angels? 
I tell you the truth, without these angels, you can never see the ancient of days. And without the angels of days, you cannot see the angels. They are one and interwoven, inseparable. Praise God. This represents the sons of the resurrection. This represents those who have put on their spiritual bodies. Because eventually, that which comes out of the sea, which represents the unregenerate man, in the resurrection, he becomes one of those angels around the throne of God, serving God. Praise God. There is a washing, there is a regeneration, a transformation in our minds, a renewing, so to say, a casting down and a destruction of everything that is idle, everything that is alien in our lives, everything that is flesh, everything that is contrary to the knowledge of him that sits upon the throne. So that we can once more live life in its fullness. These angels live by the countenance of the Lord. Praise God. These angels know what the shout of joy is. These are the ones that have been liberated totally. Oh, hallelujah. Liberated totally. From the bondages of the flesh. From the lusts that is in this age. The lust that drowns men into destruction in this world. Hallelujah. They've been liberated totally by the grace of God. These ones walk in the resurrection body. They walk in the name of the ancient of days. They manifest the angels of ancient of days. Angels don't have any identity of their own. They have no life of their own. They only live on account of the eternal name of the Lord. This one's no no death. Because they live by the countenance, by the life, the eternal life of the one that lives eternally. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. We are the ones that appear with Christ as he appears. He says, when Christ, who is your life, appears, or when Christ, who is our life, appears, we appear with him. He appears with his myriads of angels, those who walk in the reality of the resurrection body. Praise God. It's a wonderful thing, isn't it? And these ones don't trample upon one another anymore. They are no longer jealous of one another. They only see the Lord. See, notice that they all serve the Lord. They all see the ancient of days. They live by that name and live unto that name. Praise God. Now we understand what Paul meant when he says, Henceforth, know I no man after the flesh. Henceforth, know I no man after the flesh because my eyes are focused on him that sits upon the throne, upon the ancient of days. If any man sees anything apart from him that sits upon the throne, he sees an idol. He sees what? An idol. Something that is not real. That is why John says, keep away from idols. Little children, stay away from idols. These ones that stand before the ancient of days, living on account of that name, have no attachments to this world. They neither marry nor are given to marriage. These are the ones that Jesus Christ calls the sons of the resurrection. Sons of God. It's all interchangeable. In the spirit realm, you can be angels, you can be sons of God, you can be messengers. You are everything in the spirit realm. Praise God. So this kind of teachings or this remembrance that the Lord is giving us today causes us to escape 
the many pains that men suffer. Many people suffer pain and hurt today. Many people are in tribulation. Many people live in fear because they have not gotten the secrets of the body of the Lord. But God wants us to know who we truly are today. God wants us to awaken to these things today. He needs prayers. And God is faithful. He will lead you there. Yes. Things might sound too high high fetch, too far away, but with God, all things are possible. Praise God. God is able to bring us to the expected end. Hallelujah. So let us recognize the Christ within. Let us walk in newness of life. Let us enter in to enjoy the glorious liberty of the sons of God. God bless you and keep you in all your endeavors. Amen.